Okay, so um, here on UCLA's campus, there's like a lot of Asians and like sometimes they're in the library with me and I'm like trying to study and they, they're like, ching chong, blong blong. Alexandra Wallace is a student at UCLA. Apparently, Asians annoy her in the library. Alexandra is a symptom of the way we raise women to be petty, foolish. It's a long story. It starts like this. Here at Grossmont College, we have plenty really annoying people that come into the library and just talk loud, act ridiculous. A lot of them are Iraqi. A lot of them are Somali. And the passive aggressive people that get mad about the, the loud talking, because hey, I come from a culture, American culture, where you're supposed to be quiet in general, but especially in libraries. So they passive aggressively see the uh, any person, usually black, Iraqi, or Somali, they don't say anything. They just get mad. Maybe they go and complain. They would never engage the person and say, oh, I'm trying to study in the library. In comes Alexandra Wallace, UCLA student who makes a passive aggressive video saying a bunch of racist nonsense, not too important, just stuff about Asians. Asians, uh, they don't take care of themselves. They bring all their family around here, act American, a whole lot of nonsense. Nevertheless, she's a symptom of a certain mindset that is rewarded in United States culture, especially a symptom of a mindset that supposedly attractive women exhibit. She's a passive aggressive mess, but the response is the real telling thing. It's a bigger part of the disease. See, she threw a punch and the chancellor of UCLA responded. He backed up and said, well, we at UCLA, I, 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 this is not the UCLA I know. This, this student was, made me feel bad and, and, and we don't stand for that and, and poor us and, and we have a wonderful, diverse culture, all that nonsense. No mention of the loud, annoying Asians in the library because they probably were being loud, annoying, talking on their cell phone. No mention of that because it's just, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an administrative figurehead, so I have to talk about how bringing everything together. So he took the passive route. This dumb chick throws a punch and he takes the passive route and backs up. Then you got, what is the dude's name? David So. He's a comedian, so don't take it serious when I critique him because he's just telling jokes. No, comedians are passive aggressive cowards that mask philosophical messages in their comedy that they can't just outright say. So David So, he gets a punch thrown at him from the lady and Alexandra Wallace. And he steps right into it. You know, he's going to maybe counter and, you know, just take the punch and keep going. Because he says a whole bunch of pseudo ghetto, like wannabe ghetto. Like, oh, man, girl, you're crazy. You, you, you dumb white girl. You think this and that and the other thing. And, and he's saying all this silly nonsense. You know, taking the aggressive route. A little side note on wannabe ghetto nerds like David So. They like to talk like this. Man, oh, what's the deal? You know what? I talk like this because I grew up watching rap and listening to rap even though I was a highly successful student and spent my time in an absolutely passive state so I vicariously lived through the bravado of rap and I try to speak like that even as I'm a passive aggressive nerd. So the Chancellor took the passive route, David So took the aggressive route like bitch what do you know da 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 okay. Then there was another route it went something like this it wasn't the passive route standing back. It wasn't the aggressive route going forward as David So did. It was the route of, okay, the punch comes. You step a little bit to the side, but you step a little bit back. You step to the side so it doesn't hit you direct on. You step a little bit back so you can gauge the distance. And then you put your hand here as it's coming so that you can catch the wrist of the punch. Pull the person in the direction they're going. Sure, come this direction. And send them back where, they're, where they came from. That's the better way to deal with a punch, not the passive way, not the aggressive way. A little bit of sidestep, pull him the direction, give him the elbow. That was, what is the dude's name? I had it. No, it's not that. I should know this. Jimmy Wong, I knew that. I just wanted to set it up right. So Jimmy Wong, he took that route, the, the perfect route, because what he did is he set it up like he was just gonna give a regular response then he smashed the whole situation 
with the really cool song where he actually translated the random, supposedly racist stuff, the Ching Chong, uh, Ling Long, uh, Ting Tong, that Alexandra Wallace said. He translated it, made a really, really hopeful song, like, oh, I'm just saying I love you and I need you, when she was just saying nonsense. So that was the, the, the powerful route where you actually, no, no, let's go in the direction of the, that you make any sense at all, and then, then attacked her way more powerfully than you can just by passively, oh, no, we distance ourselves from the punch. Oh, no, we're right in there. What, what girl? What girl? What'd you say, bitch? No, Jimmy Wong did it perfectly. But then again, when you consider Event Horizons and Jimmy Wong's name, of course he did it perfectly. He was trained to. Event Horizons. Your ability to look to the horizon and be steadily going towards something further. The further your event horizon, the more successful you'll be. If your event horizon, a popular event horizon is paycheck to paycheck. That's your event horizon. Like I just look into the next paycheck. Not a very successful person. If your event horizon is further, I'm just looking towards the end of the year. More successful than the paycheck person. But if you've got a five-year plan, some businesses have a 20-year plan, that's an event horizon. Jimmy Wong, got it right. Jimmy Wong has a further event horizon than the passive, oh, my event horizon is just to weather this bad publicity because I'm the chancellor of UCLA. Well, my event horizon is to make people t uh, laugh at my jokes because, you know, I can really nail this girl because I'm Asian and I'm a comedian. So I'm going to call this girl a white bitch and da da da. Low event, event horizons. Jimmy Wong, he sees it. He sees the punch coming from a mile away. Okay. Uh, silly, ridiculous, foolish, racist girl. Okay, let me see. Hmm, how could I do this? How could I pull her into me? How could I sing that song just right? Good event horizon on Jimmy Wong. But as I mentioned, his name would tell you he has a good event horizon, or at least that he was descended from people who have a good event horizon. I'm going to say it again, see if you can catch it. Jimmy Wong. You catch it? Probably not. I'll say his name again, see if you can guess why the event horizon that he inherited is strong. Jimmy Wong. Plenty of people are used to that. Well, yeah, you know, Jimmy Wong. A guy with a Asian as hell last name, Wong, and the first name that's like absolutely not Asian, to say the least. Jimmy. You know, Jimmy Wong. We're used to that. Where did it come from? Well, more specifically, where did all these smart Asians come from? I'll tell you all about it. It happened like this. Back when supposedly the North freed the slaves in the Civil War of the United States. And follow me on this. Have a stronger event horizon than, whoa, he's talking about slavery now, I'm going to go to sleep. Let me explain why Jimmy Wong and his name presents a strong event horizon by telling you where smart Asians came from. So, when the North freed the slaves of the South, but kept their own slaves and kept child labor, there was a civil war because we won't stand for the racist notions of the KKK who believed America's a white Christian nation and that the Africans should go back to Africa. That's not what the KKK thought. They just hate. Go back to sleep. The KKK, as stupid as they are, they think the United States was founded as a white Christian nation. Slaughter of the Indians, different story. But they believed the, the Africans should be taken back to Africa. They were against slave labor. They were against it because it took the jobs of, of low-class white people which plenty of the ranks of KKK were low-class white people. So we have that, you know, we, we got rid of the foolish notion that blacks are stealing our jobs, you know, black slaves are stealing our jobs. Okay, moving ahead a little bit, how did we get to smart Asians from there? Well, we built a railroad from the south across the west. A lot of slave labor went into that of Africans, especially of Africans, uh, some Italians, Irish a lot, and Chinese. A lot of slave Chinese built the railroads in the United States. Okay, how do we get to smart Asians from there? Well, by the time the railroad was more or less completed, and there was a whole lot of expansion and, and building and whatnot in the United States, there was a lot of Chinese slaves around threatening the livelihood of good white Christians. And so they actually made a law in the United States, that great arbiter of getting rid of slavery, of their enemies. There was a law against Chinese immigration, more specifically a law halting Chinese immigration and then greatly controlling the amount of Asians, especially Chinese, that could come into the culture. So then eventually 
we stopped that. Eventually, we let people in, Chinese people in, Asian in general, but Chinese specifically. There was an anti-Chinese immigration law. Who do you let in first when you have this policy of no Asians, no Chinese? And then once you let Chinese, no, no, not just come in. No, you let in the best and the brightest. We want to encourage immigration of the best and the brightest. It brain drain, anthropological term. It takes the best out of the other cultures, the indigenous cultures where they came. That culture suffers. Mexico, a lot of the smartest come up to get the jobs in America, leave the infrastructure and the, the society of Mexico in, in shambles. Same thing happened in China. Best and brightest coming over to the United States. So simply put, the next time you think Asians are just smart, remember, speak more specifically. Asians aren't smart. The ones you come across in the United States, a nation built and maintained on slavery that had anti-Chinese laws and then only let in the best and brightest Asians. Those Asians are smart. The best and brightest, the only ones that were let in besides just outright slave class, the people that file your taxes and file your nails. Well, those Asians aren't all that bright. But the ones we let in to do study and whatnot, yes, the best and the brightest. So you're a little skewed on what you think an Asian is. You think an Asian is the ones that your country founded on racism and slavery, the ones they let in, yeah, those are the best and the brightest. So how does this relate to Jimmy Wong? Well, again, that's why you see smart Asians, but what does his name have to do with this? Jimmy Wong, again, you're used to, oh yeah, Jimmy Wong, weird name, you know, you know but it's, you know, American and Chinese in this case, or just any Asian name, you know, Kim Nguyen, why? Well, and as many Asian parents will tell you, Asians put a lot of, well, they're downright, um, what is the word? I had it. You could tell by the way I said they're downright. Superstitious. Very superstitious about the effect the name will have on your success in life. They're downright superstitious in China, for example, about the year you're born. You don't want to be born in the year of the lamb or the goat. You want to be born in the year of the dragon. And birth rates change greatly because of this superstition. Names, equally so. You don't give your kid the name Doofus McStupid and expect him to, to kick ass. You give him a name where he'll be successful, or she. Jimmy Wong was named Jimmy Wong and not Bing Wong or anything like that because his parents knew that in this culture of racism and slavery, the United States, people will, you will not be as successful as Bing Wong as you will Jimmy Wong. So anytime you see an Asian person with a name that just American and Asian as hell, know that that is descended from Asian parents worried to give their kids traditional names and having enough of an event horizon and saying, this name is ridiculous, you know, Janet Chang, but we're going to give it to you so you'll be successful in life. We're not going to be like the African slave descendants in the United States who had a short event horizon and said, you know what? We want to reclaim our African, African roots. We don't want these ridiculous American names you gave us. I don't want to be James Washington. I want to be you know, Mabungo Ubawi or some African name because that's my heritage and that's what I prefer. Short event horizon. Our culture does not reward people who demand self-respect. It rewards the people who say, oh, I'll just change the heritage of my family and say, my kid's not being Wong, it's Jimmy Wong. Meanwhile, they don't even pronounce the Wong because China is uh, Chinese is a tonal language. There are only so many tones. There's, or there's, only, there's only four tones. There's only so many articulations you make in Chinese and you change the tone like Wong, Wong, those are different. And so they don't even pronounce his name. They just say Jimmy Wong, Jimmy Wong. Because if you said Jimmy Wong, he'd stand out. It wouldn't work. So Africans insisted, but plenty of them, the, the ones in the 70s who insisted reclamation of their name, their heritage and whatnot, they get blacklisted. Blacklisted. They are not rewarded as much as are the, the passive uh, Asians who would change their names. So the event horizon of Jimmy Wong's parents gave him that name and he became that kind of person who has a stronger event horizon, not to back up from a punch, not to get into the middle of a punch, but actually deal with it. Okay, we don't want to change our name to some Jimmy. 
but we'll be far more successful. So we're going to change it. He's like, I don't want to really take the time to write a song for this ridiculous, racist white bitch, but I'm going to do it because it'll be effective. It's a, it's a good way to, to deal with the punch, pull her in, sing a song to her and then embarrass her. Now, speaking of event horizons, your ability to see so far, imagine who has a, another terrible event horizon. And, and again, I, I'm not against the reclamation of, of African heritage. I'm actually for it, but I'm speaking specifically of event horizons here. So it's not that they're bad and Asians are good for their event horizons, but who has another very poor event horizon, an event horizon as bad as the Africans who wanted to reclaim their name and heritage? Who is um, that precarious in our culture? White people especially the parents of supposedly attractive white women, Alexandra Wallace. Now, when you see her in the video, if you look it up, she's got the push-up bra on, she's got the makeup on, so she looks like somebody who would turn heads. You see her arms are a little fat, and you realize the push-up bra is the thing that makes her look okay. You see some modeling pictures that surfaced of her, and you realize she has to kind of turn her body, and you can't see me, but just to turn her body in such a way so it makes it look like she has a butt, because that's the thing in this culture is to have a butt now. But really, she's just deformed from moving poorly throughout her life. So she's deformed and unattractive, but nevertheless, the modeling pictures that surfaced of her are meticulously airbrushed by a professional, and she has the right little accents to make you think she's attractive. Now, it doesn't matter that I don't find her attractive, but people do. She's a head turner. So what is her parents' event horizon? This is the event horizon of parents who have supposedly attractive daughters, especially American parents, white American parents. This is our goal. You know, the African event horizon was let's reclaim our name, our heritage. That's our goal. And then we'll go from there. The Asian parent, they say, okay, well, let's change his name so he'll be successful. The event horizon of a parent of an attractive white woman. Let's tell her whatever she wants to hear. Let's give her whatever she wants. Let's placate her constantly. Let's be permissive to her endlessly so that she doesn't get pregnant that's it that is the only frame of reference the only event horizon typically for the kind of parent that raises the alexandra wallaces of the world they're like just don't get pregnant before you go to college and at least maybe finish college then you can get pregnant you know you can get that college education and have it be for nothing, smart for nothing. The way a tall, strong guy has said that he's big for nothing. Smart for nothing because you just get to college, meet a nice guy, and he'll provide with for you forever. But you can't. If you just get pregnant, that social disease of pregnancy, you will be a failure. This is the mind, the event horizon of the parents, of really, of just white women in general in this culture. Because a lot of these girls are not attractive. But if they're perceived attractive, they're likely to be picked off from the herd, made pregnant, social disease of pregnancy, and then they are lost. So the event horizon is just don't get pregnant, get into school where you'll find men who you know, get into school for dance and pottery, political science, as Alexandra Wallace is, and meet a nice guy who's doing the hard sciences that will actually get him paid because he'll contribute to society and land him and then get pregnant as soon as possible because then you'll be taken care of. That's the event horizon of the kinds of people like Alexandra Wallace. Now, again, she's the latest symptom of ridiculousness. You say, like, why would somebody say such stupid things? I, they're not really racist things. Race is a made-up thing. It's not, they're not hate-filled towards Chinese. She's just stupid. She's just petty and ridiculous. And she's passive-aggressive. So her parents failed her, and the institution failed her. Can you imagine a chancellor getting up and saying, like, we distance ourselves, and I'm a passive-aggressive coward, and I'm the administrator, and I'm the chancellor of UCLA. And imagine, he didn't even address, like, we really need to look at the fact that someone like her would even get into our institution. He might say that behind closed doors, and he might just, let's just wipe her away and blame her. Look at that idiot, Alexandra Wallace. She made it to UCLA. But again, this is what you get when, for example, you come from a culture that begins with slavery, the North frees the slaves of the South, slave labor to build the railroads, anti-Chinese immigration, then you let in the smart Asians, and then all you can think about as the elite race of this culture, the white race, with your daughter that you want to just not get pregnant, all you can think about is, let's just give her whatever she wants. And that's the sign of the times in this culture. Ask a black woman, what do white women get? Whatever they want. 
You want to be a political science person in UCLA? Hey, make everything work so that she can end up there. And what do you know? You got the girl with the push-up bra, the little, these are eyeliner marks I'm making, the little eyeliner encircling her emotional scars of being disillusioned, thinking people would care for her and nobody ever will. She's just a gimmick. And she's a success because she's not pregnant and she can be, she can be photoshopped and, um, and airbrushed into, into being attractive. And she's a mess. Look at the video of the stuff she's saying. It's just stupid. But instead of addressing, like, how would someone get this stupid? One. And how would they be this stupid and yet be successful academically and presumably socially? She doesn't look like an outcast. In fact, she said, uh, I'm, I'm not racist and this isn't directed to my friends. But Ching Chong did a bunch of racist shit against Chinese people. So apparently she even has Chinese friends. Well, of course, because she's a happy, friendly white chick who, whenever she feels like it, is racist and foolish and whatnot. Yet she's the problem. She's a victim of being a symptom of indulging girls, the parents indulging them simply so that they won't get pregnant. We have these idiot girls. We encourage them. Now we have a system set up where for every two guys that graduate with bachelors, three girls ba graduate with bachelors. Girls are graduating more. Girls are going to college more in general. Since 1996, girls have been making more bachelor's degrees. Since uh, three or four years ago, I think 2007, 2008, girls have been getting more advanced degrees. What does this tell us? Does it tell, wow, women are really on the move. The feminist movement worked. We do respect women more. No, it tells us that we are keeping women in a insulated nursery of don't get pregnant here go off to college but i don't want to study any of the hard sciences i don't want to contribute to anything i don't want to make i don't want to do a job where i'll actually get paid paid meaning you're providing a service so people pay you well now that's the hard sciences the stuff that's either difficult dangerous grueling the kind of things men get into that they end up getting paid more for girls aren't into that since 1996 girls have been getting more bachelor's degrees but they get their education as enrichment, really just as birth control by their parents and by society in general. Just don't get pregnant because we can't sell a pregnant woman to the culture at large. Wander around like Alexander Wallace and have the pink bikini and be sexy. And yeah, we can sell that and we can keep guys with their heads down looking at that and doing their work. But we can't sell you if you are pregnant. We certainly can't sell you if you're a mother. So girls getting far more education, but getting it in any silly, ridiculous field we, that they want to get it in. Then they're getting told the Alexandra Wallaces of the world, these foolish, ridiculous girls, they're being told things like, there's a gender wage gap. Girls get paid less than men. Then you find out, oh, okay, girls get paid less for the same job. That means if I walk up and there's a girl next to me and they say, we have this job to us, and she says, I'll do it for 78 cents. And I say, I'll do it for a dollar. And they go, you know what? We really like to make money in this capitalist system, but we're going to give it to the guy because apparently hiring managers are all either homosexual men with no business sense or horny women with no business sense. So they hire the men at a heightened rate just because they're men. That's what you'd have to believe if it's, I'll work for 78 cents. I'll work for a dollar. Who would hire men? Now, this is one of those logical things. So the Alexandra Wallace's the world are too busy in the library hating on the loud Asians instead of doing something about it and looking at political science. Meanwhile, the gender wage gap doesn't make sense, but it actually does. People like girls more in our culture. They want to be around them more. They're taught to hate and fear men. It's called misandry, and it's only barely getting into the dictionaries. We know misogyny, hatred and fear of women. Wow, yeah, that's, that's everywhere. The patriarchy hates women. Meanwhile, you know this culture prefers women. Women prefer women. Men prefer women. They just like them more. So it seems like the gender gap would go in the other direction, where women would actually get paid more just because people like being around them, even when they're not good at what they do. And that's the real data. The real data shows that all things being equal, women get paid about 10% more than men. That can't be true because that's not what politicians tell us. And that's not what our venal, purchasable teachers tell us. Meanwhile, that's the actual data. The reason you don't hear that interpretation is because you don't hear the apples to apples data 
interpretation. You hear, for example, two surgeons, a man and a woman, the woman gets paid less. Then you find out, oh, these aren't two surgeons. This is a specialized surgeon. The man went and got specialized training because that's harder because it gets paid more. It's pay, it gets paid more because it's harder. Well, no, it can't be that. It's, no, I saw these two. They're both surgeons, and they both do the same kind of surgery. The woman gets paid less. She's in general practice. She's not in private practice. The man goes into private practice. You get to call your own shots. You get bigger gains, but you have more risk and bigger losses. But women go for the flexible, safe jobs. That's not true. We just randomly don't hire women. We hire men for more. That's not what the data says. That's what politicians have told you and other people have told you on 13th hand information. Meanwhile, it's just not accurate. But the Alexandra Wallace's of the world, how do they ever get so stupid yet successful? Because they believe in things like gender gaps. They believe in things like, I'm not racist. To my Asian friends, this isn't to you. Damn Chinese. That's how they get so stupid. They get so stupid because when those of them who need to fill out federal financial aid forms, the girls who graduate more, go to college more, woman-only scholarships, try to find a man-only scholarship. Woman-only scholarships, yet when they go to the financial aid form, one of the questions, number 17, are you male? Uh, no. <laughs> if you're not male, skip to this. Okay, skip to this. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, right above there, if you are male, the next question is you must register for war in, a, in order to get federal financial aid. We don't have a draft. We do if we need one, and women are exempt. Yet, there's a gender wage gap. Women in sciences, the, ball, the finish line always changes because the fact is we pamper, protect, placate women constantly in this culture just for the sake of them not getting pregnant. Meanwhile, men make less than women, all things being equal. Meanwhile, when men make more, it is for the purpose of providing for women and children. Those are the stats. And I know politicians don't tell you that. I'm just telling you, this is how people get so stupid as to bring on the Alexandra Wallaces of the world. That might be it. So, uh, actually, one more thing to tie in um, these educational realities and just stupid women in academia. I was looking at a hilarious article called The End of Men, and there's a whole bunch of other... Uh, nonsense along the lines of men just aren't suited for the the changing times like we used to reward strength and now we don't reward strength now now we reward uh, emotional intelligence the ability to to uh, cooperate the ability to express yourself to share it and to, to consider other opinions that's what was rewarded and so men are a relic People are saying this, and they, they say, this is borne out by the fact, look how much more successful women are in college, look how much more successful women are, like they're, they're getting more and more in uh, managerial jobs. The thing that they don't tell you is we have a lot more Alexandra Wallaces in our ranks, meaning women are going to college more, they're more successful, so you would say, well, therefore, you know, men aren't suited to the new culture. Meanwhile, what are women getting their degrees in? Shit that doesn't matter, stuff no one wants to pay them for. They can't contribute so they don't get paid. And still men are the ones still suited to the culture of, well, if you want us to pay you, you're going to have to provide some service. I can provide you a service. I'll push up my bra and be racist towards Asians. Uh, no thanks. Next, Alexandra Wallace. How dare you? And then all of a sudden she's the problem, even though she's been raised. Like, what is your skill set? Well, I'm racist towards Asians, and I can kind of look attractive if I fake my appearance. That's good. For the last 20 years, she's been telling, no, 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 your petty foolishness is, is completely acceptable. Now she's in UCLA, all of a sudden she's the problem, and suddenly the results come through. She's a symptom of a culture that would have so many academics now, now referring back to this men not cutting it. So many academics have gone on saying, men just don't cut it, they're just not cut out, we don't need male strength anymore, and so women are better at all this other stuff. Then we keep having Alexandra Wallace type people. Women who are shit at creating bonds and considering other opinions and communication. But we have to play along. Men have to be buying into the idea of women's moral superiority and now apparently their academic superiority. Even as they see these petty, flighty, ridiculous women getting all the breaks in the world and still crashing and burning 
because you can't be successful in a world of consequences if you're mis meticulously withheld consequences all your life just so that you won't get pregnant. Nevertheless, to say it again, that's what we do. That's what the parents with their small event horizons do to these pampered, protected women in our culture. Black women excluded, and they know that. What they do is they hide all consequences away from them, all real cause and effect, and say, no, you're a girl, or it's Friday, or it's Christmas, so we're not going to talk sense to you. No, you're, or you're mad, you're PMSing. There's never a reason to tell a girl what she doesn't want to hear. She'll just, oh, how dare you? I'm going to go find what I want to hear. And then eventually they say, okay, what's the bottom line? Once they get into a job or once they actually have to do real hard science. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is my feelings dictate reality. Because all her life her feelings dictated downright legal situations. It's illegal to offend me. Okay, so law, that, that ever lurking purveyor of this is what reality is. is what we decided legally follows. And my feelings as a woman dictate law. And law is all around us, creating what we suppose is reality. So once she gets into a chemistry class and says, I just feel that these two together make this compound. And you say, well, no, that's not what they make. How dare you? That's statutory rape or that's, that's sexual harassment for telling a girl what she doesn't want to hear about the chemistry of these two components. You can rewind that part back and recognize how, yeah, that kind of is the social situation for girls. They're in a culture where they're set up to fail thinking, you know what, you get to decide what's wrong and right. You get to decide who's a monster and who's a gentleman just based on whether or not you're horny or whether or not you're mad at the time, whether you're PMS and all this kind of thing. I don't have to defend any of these ridiculous caricatures people make of men. But our culture that talks so highly of women in the context of justifying degrading men and setting women up to to succeed academically and emotionally, even as they become insane and ridiculous. You got some explaining to do. We gave her everything, and yet she's a racist, ugly chick. Not even speaking specifically of Alexandra Wallace. Ugly, even if she's hot. In our culture, we raise hot, ugly chicks. Women that are so gross, doesn't even matter that they're hot. Not to a self-respecting person. But nevertheless, no, she's a success. We gave her everything except the rules, what we're going to be testing on. Men know they're not allowed to say any foolish racist thing they want. Some of them do, but they're like off in some kind of log cabin somewhere being racist and probably Southern because you've been raised to believe that that's all Southern people do. And the only bad people in the world are Southern because you were raised by TV. But this is a girl in perfectly good standing in culture, a successful girl. She's succeeding in culture, and she's stupid, passive-aggressive, and racist. You can't find a guy like that unless he's really rich to begin with, and, and they just end up crashing and burning. But you can have plenty of just absolutely unlikable, unteachable women. Alexandra Wallace, absolutely a symptom. She, she's not some anomaly. You can see that everywhere. Petty, foolish women being rewarded. But again, not only is she a symptom, but the real weird thing is the response, this passive-aggressive response, or passive response from the chancellor, uh, this aggressive response from that David So, nerd, wannabe, uh, ghetto person, talking, man, you white bitch, da-da. And then the excellent response of Jimmy Wong, who as his name would suggest, has a far event horizon, even willing to change the name to have success in this culture where it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's not who you are, it's who people think you are. And Alexandra is just a really sweet, pretty girl. But now all of a sudden she's a monster. Go back to sleep.